You know, one thing we all have in common, whether you're black, whether you're white, Asian, Hispanic, it doesn't even matter where you were born, whether you were born into wealth or born into poverty. One thing that we all have in common is that we all have a nose. But wait a minute, there's something else we all have in common. We all have a past. And just like our nose, our past has not always been clean. There have been some times that there have been some things in our past that make us embarrassed for our future. But I want to show you in this episode from the third chapter of the book, Philippians, how Paul teaches us how to get past your past. This is Bishop Littman Live. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bishop Littman Live. I am so excited to have you here with us today. I hope that if this is your first time with us, that you will definitely subscribe to my personal channel, which you can find at Dr. A. Reginald Littman on YouTube. We're excited to welcome back those of you who join us every day, Monday through Friday, for these Bishop Littman Live relevant word sessions, and I'm so excited to share today's teaching with you. Make sure that you are signed in every time you watch us on YouTube. That way your comments will show up. Be sure to like, comment, share. We love to go back and read and uh, review your comments and interact with you digitally. And it's so exciting just to know that you're there and that you are benefiting from these teachings. Well, in today's teaching, we're gonna be talking about how to get past your past. And it comes directly from the scriptures today. Paul is addressing this idea that I'm not perfect, yet I'm moving forward with my life. I'm not going to let my past hold me back from being in the potential and living out the power and the purpose that God has for my life. And that is an on-time word for some of you right now who are watching this or listening to this on the podcast. And I, too, know what it means to have something in my past that I'm not proud of, yet to move on from it. And I want to just stop here and say this. No matter what's in your past, it's your business. No matter what you've done wrong, it's between you and God. But here's what I want you to know is that your past does not have to block your potential, nor does it ever cancel out God's power and purpose for your life. So it doesn't matter whether you have had bad financial experiences, whether you've gone through bad marriages or relationships or breakups or anything like that, whether you have a criminal record, it's all your business is between you and God, but it is in your past. Don't let your past block your potential. Don't let your past uh, try to eradicate God's purpose or power for your life. Let's look at what Paul says. Now, when Paul says these words in verse number 12 through 14 of Philippians chapter number three, I want you to keep in mind something. He is an inmate. He has a criminal record at this point. Although he did nothing wrong, he has been locked up in jail. He is writing this letter from a prison cell. So he is inmate number, whatever, 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 whatever. And so he has this, this stigmatism that goes along with him having been arrested. He is looked at by some of the Christians of his time as guilty of doing some things wrong. He's viewed by others as being completely innocent. And, and I want to go into this with that mindset that people will look at you from different perspectives. But ultimately what matters is two things. It's number one, how you see yourself. And number two, how God sees you. Maybe I should reverse that. It's how God sees you that then informs how you see yourself. Remember also Paul's past is that he had persecuted the church. He had persecuted Christians. He had persecuted even Christ himself. And Paul, as a boy, was holding the coats of those who were stoning Christians. And so he was a part of this regime and this religious order and this religious sect that persecuted Christians. And so he's got on one hand being a thug. <laughs> on the other hand, he's converted to a Christian and now he's persecuted by the church. 
And so I just wanted to give you sort of a foundation for our reading today. Now, in Philippians 3, verse 12 through 14, we find Paul saying this. I don't mean to say I am perfect. I haven't learned all I should even yet, but I will keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear brothers, I am still not all I should be, but I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. Look at this. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did for us. Now, this is an amazing teaching. I don't want you to miss it today. So let me break it down for you. First of all, Paul says to us, number one, in order to get past your past, you have to recognize your humanity. Recognize your humanity. Now, look at what Paul says. Paul is the one, by the way, who wrote over two thirds of the New Testament. And yet he says in verse number 12, I don't mean to say I'm perfect. So Paul automatically recognizes his own humanity, that he's made mistakes in the past and all of that, but he also accepts the fact he is not perfect. Even though he is an apostle of Jesus Christ, even though he saw the Lord and all of that, he says right off the cuff, I don't even want to perpetrate like I am perfect. So he recognizes his own humanity. He goes on to say, I have learned all that I should even yet. Again, recognizing I am still in a growth period. I have not arrived at the place that I ultimately will arrive at yet. And then he goes on to say, but I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. When you recognize your humanity, it is not an excuse for the wrong that you've done in your life. It is not an excuse for your imperfections. It is an acknowledgement that I am not quite whole. I am not quite complete. I don't have it all together. And I have the propensity and the likelihood to make mistakes and more mistakes to let people down and even to let the Lord down, even to let myself down. And what will help many of us is if we would take the time to disentangle ourselves from what I call the Messiah syndrome. The Messiah syndrome is this feeling that you have to be perfect, you have to be flawless, that God put you on this earth to rescue everybody and therefore you must be clean and perfect and spotless and absolutely without flaw. You'll never get there. Never, 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 never will you ever be perfect in this earth. And so once you accept that reality and accept the fact I am human, I bleed, I cry, I sweat, I have bodily releases of fluids, I have issues. My mind doesn't function all the time the way it should. Sometimes I do things wrong deliberately and not deliberately, but I am human. I am full of faults and frailties and all of that, yet I'm still growing. And, and, and we're not making excuses for who we are and where we are. We're just simply accepting the fact that we are not Jesus Jr. And you've got to get to that point where you accept the fact I am human. And once you accept your humanity and understand that there is divinity inside of your humanity, then you will be able to move forward with your life and able to thank God for every imperfection. Because once you understand that you are not perfect and that you're not all that in the back of chips, then you can understand how grace really operates in your life. And if it had not been for the grace of God, we don't have a clue where we would end up or be right this very moment. And so we have to accept the fact, number one, recognize my humanity. And my humanity is utterly dependent upon God's divinity. If the Lord does not help me, I will not survive. And so in doing that, you take the pressure off of yourself spiritually. And then you, you trust God to be God in your life and understand that without him, I'm nothing. 
with him, I can do all things. And so we have to accept the fact that we are humans, that we will fall, we will fail, we will make mistakes, and that there's already been a provision for us. It's called confessing our sins. It's called going back to God. It's called going humbly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy, Hebrews chapter 4. So Paul says, in order for you to get past your past, forgive yourself and acknowledge the fact I am human. Here's number two. Paul says, after you recognize your humanity, number two, refrain from negativity. It's in the 13th verse of Philippians 3. Look at it. No, dear brothers, I am still not all I should be. Here it is. But I'm bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. All right. So this is the one thing Paul says that he is putting all of his energy into. And that is forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Now, Paul is teaching us refrain from negativity. To forget literally means to neglect to feed something. I remember having plants when I was in my early 20s and I was all over the place. I was traveling, I was in and out of town and that kind of thing. And when I got back home after a number of days, I discovered that my plant had died And I was so upset about it. I said, why on earth did this plant die? I was only gone a few days. And then when I calculated how long I had been out of town, it dawned on me that the plant died because I neglected to feed it and water it while I was gone. Forgetting is the same exact principle. The way that you forget something is that you stop feeding it. You neglect feeding it. You neglect cultivating it. You neglect watering it. And what Paul is saying here is when you refrain from negativity, that is when you stop nursing and rehearsing in your mind, the things that are wrong with you and the things that are wrong with your past, when you stop feeding into people who love to remind you of all of your mistakes. And we all have those people somewhere in our lives that can keep better track of our mistakes and they can their daily expense account or their daily budget. When you stop cultivating relationships and mindsets and thoughts that remind you of your past, that is the process of forgetting. And forgetting is a process. It doesn't happen just like that, but it happens in stages and in phases of your life where you stop going back and revisiting all of the mistakes of your past. And that's what Paul is saying. Refrain from negativity. There've been times that I have talked to old friends and the first thing that they could say or the, about the third sentence in the conversation was, I remember when you fill in, you, you fill in your own blank, right? We all have blanks. And I had to understand that one of two things had to take place. Either I had to quickly redirect the conversation or the more drastic route that some of you need to take is reroute them out of my life. Well, you said that, that sounds a little hard and a little harsh, Bishop. Maybe it is. But I'll tell you what's more harsh and hard than moving people out of your life who are not good for your future is leaving people in your life who are bad for your future. And so sometimes you have to really take inventory of your life and say, as I evaluate this relationship, this friendship right here, is this benefiting me or is this hurting me? And so Paul teaches us in this text to refrain from negativity. You don't need to keep singing the same song about how bad your past was or the mistakes you made. You don't need to keep looking at pictures of your mistakes. Take down the pictures of your ex-wife, your ex-husband, your ex-boo thing. Take them out out of your frame. Put something beautiful in their frame. Put a picture of of a sunny day, of a beautiful brook, or, or just the word future in that frame. Because the more you rehearse it and nurse it, the more anniversaries you have for your suffering. The more, the more pain you have, uh, for the things that you've gone through. And so Paul says, I am forgetting, I am failing to feed and to water and to nurture my mistakes of the past. Remember now, Paul was a murderer, a legitimate gangster, religious fellow who was authorized to kill Christians. So he has taken lives. He's done many people wrong. Yet he says, I'm not going to keep looking at that. I'm not going to keep rehearsing that. I'm not going to keep talking to people who remind me of my past. No, I've got to press on. And he says, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. 
So number one, recognize your humanity. Number two, refrain from negativity. Let's think of number three now. Paul teaches us to refocus your productivity. Look at ver verse 13, the bottom of it, going into verse 14. Philippians 3, Living Bible, chapter, thir chapter 3, verse 13, B, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Now notice this. This is really good. In order for you to go forward with your life, you have to let go of something and cling to something else. You have to let go of your past and you have to cling to what lies ahead of you. And that's what he says in the bottom of verse 13, Philippians 3, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Now, verse 14, I strain, the King James Version says, I press, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did for us. Now, here's what Paul is saying. As Paul is sitting in jail, he's thinking about the races in Athens, Greece, and he's, he's thinking about the marathon races. Uh, that there are several laps around that track. And in these different laps, each time you're applying a certain amount of energy. But that last lap, which is the determining factor as to who wins and who loses, Paul says, I strain. So I am pushing with all of my might. I'm almost out of energy, but I can't stop because I'm too close to my destination. And so Paul says here, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven. And so Paul wants us to understand here that in order for us to forget the things that are behind us and reach forward to the things that lie ahead of us, you have to refocus your productivity, meaning you have to put all your energy and effort into the win. You are a winner, but in order for you to win, you have to put all you have into the win. Hey, listen, this is exciting to me because productivity lies ahead of you, but you have to refocus your mind and your attention in order to go after your future. Don't let your future escape you but refocus your productivity so that you can get what God wants to put into your hand. He's trying to pass the baton of your future into your hand. But notice this, one runner reaches back while the other runner reaches forward. Here it is. God has gone ahead of you and he's in front of you and he's already gone through your future and he's saying to you, your future is good. And he's passing it back to you. Reach out to God right now and say, Lord, I'll take it. And with everything you have, lean in to your future. Believe God for your future. Let go of your past. Get past your past. And know that what is coming is better than what has been. One more time. What is coming in your life is better than what has been. I want to pray with you right now. God wants to deliver you from grieving over lost things, lost relationships, maybe lost jobs, maybe lost income in these days and times, maybe lost friendships, maybe lost loved ones, maybe lost endeavors, lost business opportunities. Hey, God can bring you through this and you can get past your past. I don't care if your credit score has taken a deep dive into the ocean. Maybe you've lost with the stocks. Maybe you've lost money. Maybe you've lost on investments. But listen, you can get past this and you can reach forward and you can lunge ahead for what God has in store for you. I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for my friend who is viewing or listening to this episode. God, there's so many things that have happened in our lives and that are happening right now in our world that we've never, ever seen before. We need you to be our strong shield. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to get past our past so that we might indeed know what it really means to reach forward toward what you have for us. Help us to let go of thoughts and things, people, if necessary, personalities, 
past pains that anchor us in a place of negativity. And Lord, deliver us from the pain of our past. Deliver us from people who distract our potential. Help us to forgive ourselves as you've already forgiven us. God, we put our past under the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for sweet relief in knowing the Lord will make a way somehow. And we pray this prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It is always my great joy to share these moments with you. By all means, if you have a special prayer request or prayer need, and you'd like for me to pray with you and keep it confidential, just simply send your prayer request to Bishop Prayer with Bishop at gmail.com. Again, that's prayer with Bishop at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to study with my e-class and join us for a little bit deeper study of the scriptures. I'd love to share my resources with you and my years of study of scripture with you. You can join my e-class. You don't have to leave your house to do it. There's no cost. It is free of charge. I would love to share with you free PDF study guides to help you really understand the scriptures better and discussion questions that you can delve more deeply into the study and get more out of it. Well, how do I get that? It's very simple. You simply send an email to me at bishoplitman at clearstudies.com. Wait, let me correct that. It's clearstudies at gmail.com. Clearstudies at gmail.com. Well, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, send that email right now, right after we get off, clearstudies at gmail.com. And I look forward to sharing with you with our e-class. We're growing and God's doing great things for people all around the nation. Well, thank you for watching today. I pray that you have a marvelous day and that God will keep you, help you to get past your past. God bless you.